Well, good afternoon, folks. Welcome to a new um, video for Mr. 305. Uh, today, we're going to have a quick look at the PC12, which is a very quick introduction of, of what it is, and um, having a little look at the uh, the graphics of it. And you know, have, have a little walk around. This is my first time loading the aircraft. All right, I've just bought it from Marketplace, twenty pounds and ninety nine pence, which is quite cheap for. Um, a Carinado kind of, you know, aircraft. <coughs> it's, um, excuse me, I've got a cough, guys. Um, that is rather cheap. Now, I want to know why it's so cheap. Because usually their stuff, you're talking £40, you know, £45, uh, £50 an aircraft, so I don't know why um, this one is, uh, is different. But here we are. This is the PC-12, guys. Um, it's much anticipated by all the users from the FSX days. Um, a lot of people have said that they, they do want to see this in the sim. And it's it's here now. It's it's basically a TBM um, that's already in the sim, but it's just a little bit bigger. Just a little bit bigger. It's not massively bigger. Uh, you just get a few more passengers in. Um, but this is uh, based on a kind of an old school model. So let's, have, let's go ahead and have a look around the outside, because uh, obviously this is my first time seeing this as well. Excuse me. Uh, this is one of the um, 15 liveries that you do get with the aircraft. Just a plain white, just to show off the, uh, the rivets on it. So let's have a look from the front. We we'll get zoomed in there. Oh, nice reflection. It's a good reflection of the uh, propeller cone there, of the airfield, which uh, is dynamic as well, which is brilliant. Um, let's have a look at the rivets on the front there. You can just about see. The rivets are detailed. Now a lot of people are saying in the chat rooms that this is a port from FSX. Um, it probably is. I'm not too sure to be honest. Um, the photographic actually on that uh, taxi light there doesn't look over clever. Um, but apart from that guy, I mean it's, it's... Even if it is a port, it doesn't make it a bad thing. As long as it performs well. I mean, looking at the undercarriage and the landing lights situation there is fantastic. It looks looks real. Um, yeah, the propeller looks good. The intake. There's no kind of blurring smudges on the <coughs> on the liveries there, and everything's 3D modeled the correctly. The blinds, the the windows there. I mean, I've got to admit, it is a nice looking aircraft. I, I must admit, it's beautiful, really. I did enjoy flying this in the. In FSX, so hopefully we'll have lots more fun this time round as well. So you got your nav lights at the end there. You got your anti ice on the wings, uh, and also you've got your navigation lights on the end, which are looks green. I don't know why. Uh, let's go around the back. Let's have a look. A little look around the back. Uh, you got your obviously your luggage compartment door there, and uh, let's have a look at the operational movement of the river while we're here. Uh, full left. All right. Let's do some uh, input sticks there. I'll tell you something, that's a really like. <coughs> I I've got a I've got a uh, a yoke there, and that the smallest of movement, and that is, you know, that's what it's like in real life. The small small inputs are, you know, by the, all all by the the wire controlled things. A little bit of buffer on the flaps there. But apart from that, guys, it's it's, it look, it's looking all right. I'm gonna fall down. That's a little bit sensitive, is that? But yeah. I'll look around the other side. Oh. Dave's in the way there. Hello, Dave. But yeah, it looks it looks good. Um, first impressions are, I mean, some of the photo, photographical, like that little landing light on the wing to the left there, not so good. But... I mean, it looks weathered as well. This aircraft, this livery as well, does look weathered. So whether that's something to do with it, but that looks really nice. I do like the weathered look um, with these. So let's go ahead. Like I say, guys, this is my first time actually looking at it. I'm running a bit stuttery, actually. Um, so we'll go ahead. Well, let's, let's have a look inside. Let's see what the crack is. So this is the cockpit, um, obviously. Now let's see what works and what doesn't. So let's have a look at some blinds. Oh, they work. Oh, 
not too sure what they do. Um, I'm not too sure what the point of them is there. Obviously, they should pull down a little bit further. <coughs> Unless you're 25 foot tall, then you can look for them. So yeah, that that needs to be fixed. It needs to need to come down a lot lower down centre of the windscreen. Um, let's have a look. That uh, let's open the window. Oh. Okay, guys, the window doesn't open. That's a poor failure on Carinado's part, that. Because everything in the Carinado should work. That was the whole point. They, they, they were one of the top, you know, modelers for and the, and the top notch products for FSX and, and for Microsoft Flight Simulator, you know. N none of the uh, breakers work. There was not much information, to be honest, on this product. The map light doesn't work. The parking brake obviously will work. <coughs> got your fuel and stuff there. Now this 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 model has had has got the um, upgraded avionics package as well. It's got the, the digital systems. The, the glide stop indicator and stuff, and um, all your engine gauges are all digital in this. Uh, the older model previous to this, they're all manual instruments, so this has had an upgrade, uh, which is good because obviously uh, we do prefer the digital stuff. Also, get your overhead panel there. So but let's go. So the window doesn't open, which is no disappointing. Never mind. Bigger things. The propeller, obviously, we'll, we'll test the um, we'll test the pitch of the prop and see if that. Uh, works very shortly. But let's go and have a look in the cabin because this is what Karen are known for. Can you open any of the doors? Let's have a look. No! Oh my god! You used to be able to open everything in a Karen aircraft. Uh, some, of the, some of the modelling in the actual cabin is pretty poor. Uh, you can't... Oh, oh, we've got an armrest. Armrest go up. Uh, oh, what's this? Press latch, pull lever up. Fuel. Oh, excellent. So anyway, let's have a look at the cabin. Let's see, let's see what's going on back here. So this, this is obviously the, um, I'm guessing the standard one, two, three, four, the standard six configuration. Um, in this aircraft, you do have different variations that you, you do have. Uh, oh, what's this? Look at this. This is an emergency exit, and it is highlighting my mouth. Let's press it and oh, the whole thing goes. Oh, it's a blind! Look at this! The blinds go down. That's pretty neat. I do like that. You see that in the Phoenix as well, which is really, really good. I was, <laughs> I was kind of hoping that uh, I was able to remove the emergency exit, and I thought, oh my god, that way. Oh, we've got a very fast table. Further look round. So interior wise it's it's not bad. It's not bad. Um could be room for improvement, yeah. Yeah, definitely room for improvement. Um but yeah, it's not bad. It's very basic in this one, it's obviously not a luxury variant. <coughs> and obviously you've got your your exit there as well, which um, I imagine if you press that. Um I don't know where you click to shut. You'd really have to go outside to close it. Yeah, you must do. So anyway, let's um, let's go back into the cockpit because I believe this comes with an iPad. There we go. Is that an iPad? Oh, there we go. And this is something that. Uh, no, come on. Why does this sit there? That's really annoying. What a stupid place to put that. Like you would think you would put it like in most aircraft. It's kind of, you know, down here. You know, to the left hand side out of the way. Why is it there? That's that's that's, that's really annoying. And I bet it's not just sat on anything. Oh! Look at that, we've got a floating iPad. 
come on, Colorado, get your bloody act together. That's pathetic. Come on. If anybody knows how to uh, how to move that, let me know in the comments because I don't know how to move that. It just keeps saying. But anyway, right. So static elements. Let's put them on. Let's put that off. Tow bar. Let's put it on. Pilot, show me no, no. Passenger is open. Cargo door is now open. <coughs> oh, excellent! Now, see, this is something that I was in discussions with the Carino team a little while back um, on Discord, talking about the GTN 750 um, incorporation into their aircraft, and they've finally done it. They've finally put it in now because I'll be honest with you, this this system, the, you know, the, the GS 550s is crap. You know, it's very it's very old now. Um, you know, you see these in like the 1970s pipers flying around, you know. So let's just activate the, the GTN. Oh, it's 750. Oh, we'll throw Oh. Right. Okay. So. It's showing that I've got the GTN 750 is installed. However, that's that's not the GTN 750 unless it is the screen. But I tell you what, let's let's turn the batteries on. Let's find out what's going on. That's not the GTN 750. So what is going on here? <coughs> let's get the avionics on. Right. So. Oh, there we go. There we go. So, GTN 750, it just took a little while to hover hover your mouse over, then you can press it. So there you see, the 750 I've got there installed. Oh, there's a new version available. Um, which is a more, a more modern, you know, kind of GPS system integrates, into this, which, which is great to fly with, so I'd recommend that uh, from the PMS 50 website. Uh, let's have a look what else we've got. So you've got the 750XI, the, it's just a 750, but made by a different company. Alright. Um, I don't have that, unfortunately, because that's uh, a lot more expensive. Let's have a look. Start cold and dark ready cockpit, so that's all your cold and dark settings. And you've also got your checklist incorporated into here as well. So let's go ahead and look outside um, and see what the crack is visually with the doors open. Oh, so we've got, got the static elements on now, look. The do not remove. That's pretty cool. Very well modelled. Uh, exterior doors, um, yeah. Pretty well done. Not too sure about the speed of the opening for the uh, the main door. Uh, let's go and have a look at that. So let's close the main door. And the sounds, I mean in real life, if you've ever, ever seen one of these aircraft guys, the um the older models some of them are electric some of them are on uh pistons now this one would probably on a piston because there's no electric button to open actually open the door and close it at all so i imagine that when you open the door it should make a noise and go a lot slower than that so that's that needs to be fixed it's not very realistic unfortunately um but yeah that's just been me being critical, to be honest. <coughs> so let's get rid of the tow bar. And let's go ahead and see what the propeller pitch is like. So we'll close the doors. That's far too fast. You can't even get outside to watch it. So, static elements off. Right. Okay. Master caution reset. So let's have a look at the propeller, the propeller pitch proper. See if it actually moves. Hmm. Nothing yet. So it doesn't have the conditioner. OK. 
Okay, so the conditioner doesn't actually move the propeller. If, if I'm doing that wrong, guys, please let me know. Uh, but as far as I can see. Let's have a look at that. Yeah, so that's that's not modelled at the minute. Which, unfortunately, it, it is. You know, it is on other aircraft in the sim, it is. So they need to sort that out as well. So let's have a look at the cockpit lighting. Let's let's get some lighting going. Instrument lighting on. Visor lighting bright. That's a dome. Cockpit flood. Cabin on. Reading lights on. Should have been that on. Hey, excellent. So let's go ahead and. Oh, is that a weather radar down here as well? Press any bezel to continue. Traffic system. Oh, we do have a weather radar. Whether it's mapped, I, I'm not sure if it is or not. But um, yeah, I'll have to read the uh, the instructions on that one. Unfortunately, uh, let's have a look at some lighting outside. Right, let's go start with the nav lights. Let's have a look at nav. Very well detailed. Not like little blobs, they're actually, uh... Oh. That was different, that one. Interesting, I didn't realise, I didn't notice that, it's got a... Is it an external fuel tank or something like that? I'm not too sure. Right, let's go for taxi light. Beautiful. And I'll tell you what, it's good to see the halogen lights again. Um, because obviously I, I fly the 737 quite a lot and with a new LED package on it, so I don't really see the halogen lights anymore. But that's beautifully modelled. Um, we'll go for landing lights. Lovely. Yeah, that, is, that does look nice, guys. Not going to lie, that is uh, pretty sweet. And then we'll go... I don't think it's got, has it got a beacon like this aircraft? Oh, it has. Got a beak on the back. And then we'll go strobe lights. Let's have a look at strobes. Excellent. So we do have some pretty neat light in there as well. <coughs> Overhead panels. Um, obviously, you've got different lights. Like tests, and then you've got your obviously your de-ice and stuff there, and your, your cooling systems and your bus overloads. So how do I turn the uh, lamp test on? Okay, stay off. Excellent. Right, so. I'll be honest guys, I have no idea how to start this aircraft. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to guess, and just by... <coughs> I'm going to go to ground idle. What does that do? So I've got the Bravo system. It's moving something. But I don't know what. <laughs> Anyway, let's go ahead and get it started. So, ignition, automatic. Let's have a look. Gen 1 is off. External power's off. Let's go for start and see what happens. We've got spool. We've got spool on the M1 there. Sounds nice.
completed. It's on. Oh no. Gen 1, start my bus on. Gen 2 is on. Master power emergency off button, obviously, is not simulated there, which is again quite poor actually. Um, for this for this developer, what we'll do, guys? We'll um, we'll take you for a taxi, and then we'll we'll take you a little takeoff and to see what, we'll just see what your handles like. Like I say, I've not flown this, so it'd be interesting to see what your flies like. So we might as well give it a a little whirl. Um, I'm not familiar with this aircraft whatsoever, so we'll see what happens. So we'll give a notch of flaps for takeoff. engine up to fly idle. <coughs> and let's go for a little taxi to quick take off. That's very fast. Glasgow Ground Logan 7715 with Mike request taxi for takeoff departing straight out. Oh, we're already taxiing. Sorry, we're away. Saving, and we don't need much runway to take off with this aircraft, which is quite powerful. I'm just using the brakes just to basically steer us. Very sharp on the brakes, very sharp. Pay attention to the sounds as well. A lot of people are saying she's very quiet in the cockpit. I think she's quite loud, if I'm honest. So let's go ahead and let's, let's spool that engine up to flight idle. I don't think I had the propeller conditioned there. Glasgow um, approach Logan 7715 is type 1 mile southwest of Glasgow 200 Because we don't seem to be. Request flight following. Pulling away very much to be honest. Logan 7715 Glasgow approach. Squawk 0407. Squawk 0407 Logan 7715. So. Logan 7715 radar contact 2 miles southwest of Glasgow 600 feet. Altimeter 2.9 decimal 8.3. That is now full throttle. Roger, Logan 7715. Yeah. What's beeping at me now? She's a bit stuttery in the cockpit, guys. Very frame heavy. Not liking that. Hey! 
Um, I'll be honest with you, I don't know whether I've got... So, I've got my throttle, unfortunately, is set up for a twin prop on the Bravo at the minute. I haven't changed it back to the DBM setting. But it just feels a bit underpowered. It just feels like there's not a lot of power there. So whether I've not um, correctly set the pitch... But, you know, yeah, we should be doing... We should be pulling a lot faster than that. It does feel nice to fly, uh, it feels very responsive, which is a good feel, especially I'm using the Bravo Quadrant um, and Yoke, and it, it does, you know, it's more it's spot on to actually, uh, the flight controls there, it's fantastic, up and down. A little bit sharp on the rudder, um, but you probably wouldn't get that effect, you would get the dip, which is good. Uh, let's go for right rudder, you should get the right dip. There you go. Fantastic. So just test now. No, that's good. Uh, right, we'll bring it back. We'll bring it back down. Into Glasgow. I'll do a hometown airport. And then we shall switch her off. And we'll, we'll, we'll see what you guys think. We'll have a little... Uh, we'll have a little... Skin flap about uh, what's good and what's not good. What I don't like about it. here on purpose I want to see what the reverse thrust is like oh spot on on the old brakes.
yeah, animated pretty well there actually. Um, like I say, it's a bit. Um, in F18 times there. It's a bit frame heavy in the cockpit. Um, iPad doesn't sit anywhere apart from mid-air. Um, but yeah, apart from that... And battery's off. It's a little bit jittery in the cockpit. Uh, they, need to, they need to sort the refresh rate out there. Um, some visors they really need to sort out that it's absolutely pointless. It doesn't do anything at all. Um, but do you know what? Oh, now why did that shut the door? I opened the door. Come on. Far too fast, by the way. Um, for 20 quid? Uh, yeah, I would recommend it for 20 quid. It's, you know, it is probably a study level aircraft. However, there is a lot of things in the cockpit. Uh, maybe come out with an update, but it's really frame heavy. So massive stutters there in, in the old refresh rate. Um, a lot of things obviously do work, <coughs> um, but there's a few things that don't as well. You know, which um, <coughs> for a Canada aircraft, you would expect them to work. You expect everything to work. Um, so I don't understand why. You know why why it's not working. But never mind. For some reason, I can't actually shut down that panel. Um, because external power's off, so I don't know why. Oh, there we go. Stand by. Yeah. Um, very stuttery, guys. In that, in that, uh, the refresh rate in the cockpit is very bad. But yeah, I'd recommend it. Uh, you know, if 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 you're looking for some turboprop to fly. Um, yeah, it's a nice aircraft. Um, I think, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I think it is a, a port from FSX, personally. I think it is. Um, I could be wrong, but I, I, that's what I think it is, because um, there's a lot of stuff that's not modelled really quite well, uh, like the door opening and the sounds and stuff. Uh, in FSX, when I had this, um, the older model, <coughs> the doors used to do the same, used to fly open. And it, you know, in real life, it's really not like that at all. Um, it's quite uh, gentle. But apart from that, it's, it it looks nice. It looks well well designed. And you know, the gra graphically, it's it's, it's stunning. Um, externally and internally, you know, the cockpit is nice. It's how you expect it to be from the developer. Um, just little things, you know, little little things that aren't quite there, like the uh, invisible iPad that's kind of been held up by itself, which is a little bit weird. Um, and yeah, little things that don't work, like uh, you know, buttons that you can't press and vents that you can't move, which obviously a lot of aircraft now that they've got a lot of competition. You know, it's 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 no excuse now. They've got a lot of competition, and they should be providing that. You know, um, yeah. And the only other thing, guys, as well, that obviously they've only brought this out for marketplace, which is very disappointing because. I don't like buying things from Marketplace, I like to buy them from the development themselves, because obviously I know Microsoft gets a cut from that. But, updates, okay? So, Carinado will probably release an update next week. Um, it'll be live, ready to go, but Marketplace, a Sobo won't put it on until next month. So that's, unfortunately, the very slow on updates on Marketplace, which is a bit crap. Um, especially when you've got a bugged aircraft. I mean. It flies quite well. Um, it flies neat. It flies very, very tidy to trim. Um, bugs up really easily, and I think, yeah, I think handling-wise, it, it's nice. It's nice to fly. It was for a little short flight. You know, it's a little tactical descent there and straight onto the runway, as I would probably do in a fighter jet. And you know, it did it quite nicely. So, yeah, I would say go ahead and buy it. It's, it's got potential to be nice, and um, you definitely use use the GTN 750 with it because. The PMS 550 with it is is, is crap. You, you don't want that. It's it's rubbish. Uh, the 750 you've got your flight plans and stuff in there integrated, and you know your traffic and stuff, and it's a lot nicer to use. So I'm glad they put that in there. Um, please let me know what you think, guys, in the comments. Um, let me know if you like it, yeah or nay, and I'll uh, reply to most of you. But thanks for watching again, guys. Uh, so it's been so long um, with work and stuff tied up. This is hard when I get home.
to sit and do uh, videos and reviews of aircraft. Unfortunately, I didn't work away. Um, so yeah, take care, stay safe, see you around.